Hey parents, kids, teens, whoever happens to be watching this. Um, I'm Pastor Curtis from Calvary Baptist Church and I thought I would give you a few encouragements of things to be thinking about, especially with all this time at home that we all have right now. The Barna Group is a group of Christian researchers who write books and blogs and have a website. And in, they're talking in a book called Gen Z about the kids born aged from 1999 to 2015. And they said this, 57% of Gen Z are using some technology four or more hours per day. I can't imagine what these stats would look like today, especially during this time when everyone is stuck at home. So I wanna encourage you as parents and I wanna encourage you teenagers to consider a few things. First, your health. Having a time, compare screen time to having a healthy routine. It wouldn't be healthy to exercise for an entire day. It wouldn't be healthy to sleep for an entire day. And really, it wouldn't be healthy to even read a book for an entire day. And it wouldn't be healthy to eat for an entire day. So why would it be healthy for us to consume technology for an entire day? I wanna encourage you as families and as teenagers, Set limits on the amount of technology you or your kids or your teenagers are gonna interact with. I recommend that at least during the normal school hours, nine to three, eight to three, have no technology, no TV, no movies, no video games, nothing to distract. And for the rest of the day, I'd really encourage you to think about technology and keep it to a low, one to two hours per day of TV, movies, and video games. Maybe one or two hours of phone use or less per day for teens and even adults. I hope you come up with some really cool things, some really cool rules together as a family about what would be appropriate and what wouldn't be for your use of technology. And parents, you're gonna have to do this by leading by example. The hardest part of this would be to lead. And you have to set the example. Don't interact with your phone. Don't interact with your email. Don't watch TV so, so much and your kids will notice that. Rather, engage with your kids and teens. Do some fun activities together. Read the Bible together. Teach them how to do some dishes, how to make meals, how to do the laundry. Maybe find that dusty old shelf of board games and break one out, do it together. How about a puzzle, putting a good puzzle together, reading a book out loud together as a family, and maybe even trying to memorize verses together like a game. I'll post a few websites on this Facebook thread that'll give you some good ideas. If you as parents stay constantly plugged into technology, your kids won't be seeing a very good example and they'll likely do the same. So consider putting away the technology. Second. Consider what the Bible says about laziness. Listen to this proverb about a sluggard. Proverbs 24 verse 30 says this, I went past the field of a sluggard, past the vineyard of someone who has no sense. Thorns had come up everywhere, the ground was covered with weeds, and the stone wall was in ruins. I applied my heart to what I observed and learned a lesson from what I saw. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little holding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come on you like a thief. This proverb goes on to basic goes to say basically, watch out not to be lazy. And in times like these especially, we can't just sit around and do nothing. We can't allow our house to become a place where we just do what makes us feel good all day long. God created us to work. He created us to learn. He created us with our minds to be creative, to go outside and experience, experience nature, to grow as people, and yes, to rest like he rested. Rest isn't a bad thing, but resting for too long can be a temptation and it can turn into laziness. So the third thing I see is that we have an opportunity. This is an opportunity for you and your kids, for you as a family to grow together. And two of the best opportunities you can have would be to start a family devotion time where you read scripture together. And secondly, to start a family prayer time. 
Lead your kids by example, not only in technology use, but in how much they care about the Bible. Show your kids that God is number one in your life by spending, spending time with God as a family. If this is something you've never done or something you might have always done or somewhere in between, I hope that as a family, you'll start to see the real value in spending time every day with God. Proverbs 22, says, 22 verse 6 says, Start children off in the way that they should go, and they, even when they are old, they will not turn from it. Train up your family to love the word of God, to pray together, and to have a relationship with God. That is the absolute best thing that you could do, not only in these quarantine days, but every day of life with your family. Train them to love God, not just on Sundays, but every day of the week. I hope you find this encouraging, and I hope to see you all real soon. Thank you for listening.